welcome back to my channel. I'm Danielle and I am the owner of Dan Fancy Creations and the Drunk Flamingo Glitter. If y'all are new to my channel, I do want to let you guys know that you can catch my content in two other places. I have a large tutorial group on Facebook as well as a smaller Patreon group where I offer exclusive content, discount codes, free digital files, and fun group challenges each month. Both of those groups are super fun, so I am going to drop that info in the description in case those groups sound like something you guys want to check out. Today's tutorial is actually um, based off of my patron challenge last month. I challenged my patrons to create a Tumblr inspired by their favorite Christmas carol or Christmas song. So I decided to participate in it and I loved how they turned out. So I decided to make these for the cup of the month last month. Um, these were super fun to make. They involved a technique that I had never done before, which was the patina rusted look. Um, I really, really love how it turned out and I cannot wait to do another tumbler um, with just the patina finish. So for this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how I apply the music sheet um, water slide, which is done in two sections, and then how I did the patina effect, which is done in a couple different layers, and then of course adding the printable vinyl poinsettia flowers and how I went and glittered certain detailed areas of the flowers. So there are a lot of different kind of techniques involved with this tumbler, but if you kind of do them in steps, it really isn't very overwhelming. They're super simple to do. Um, it just may take a little time and a few more steps than you may be used to, but you can definitely do it. So if you guys are ready to see how I created this fun Christmas song inspired tumbler, let's get started. Alright guys, so the very first thing we're going to do is prep our cup and spray paint it white. I also went ahead and epoxied my tumbler. That way the water slide would have an easier base to slide onto. This is my water slide image that I'm going to be using. I print it out on Sunny Scopia brand inkjet clear water slide. And I spray it one really good time with Rust-Oleum two times. I just printed two of the same image and I'm going to really focus on the top part of the image on one half of the cup and the bottom half of the image on the other half of the cup. I thought that these sheets of music had um, some really cool details so I wanted to make sure that both sides were included. So I'm really just cutting it to where it fits my cup. And the edges are going to be covered with the patina textured paste. So I'm not too worried about getting it straight or anything like that. Um, for my water slide, all I do is just wet the backing of the slide. I do not um, submerge it in water or anything like that. I just get the um, backing wet and after about 30 seconds it will slide off pretty easily. And when you're doing water slide you do want to wet your cup as well. That will help the image or the slide basically slide around on the cup until you get it placed where you want it. If you try to place the slide on a dry cup, it will not be able to move around as easily. So once I get my water slide loose, I'm just sliding it on my cup. And I am moving the top down a little bit. You guys can see that. It's not right up against the edge because when I apply the patina textured paste, I do want to still be able to see that image so I don't want to cover it with the paste. And I just squeeze out all of my water with my microfiber cloth. I typically will start in the middle and slide the water out 
And once I have the majority of the water out from underneath the slide, I am just basically wiping from top to bottom, bottom to top, um, from the middle outward to make sure that all of that water is out from underneath the water slide. Um, and you guys can see that I really didn't move this around too much. You don't wanna handle the slide too much because that is what causes cracks or rips or tears or stretching the image, things like that. So we really just wanna get that image on there, get it straight, get the water underneath it and don't touch the image. And again, this is just sealed with Rust-Oleum two times gloss clear, just one really good time. I don't spray five different times with five different types of sprays. I just use Rust-Oleum. It's what I've used for years. I just have never seen a need for spraying it with several different products. So again, I just wet the backing and we're going to wait about a minute and it will be loose and we will be able to slide it onto the tumbler. You guys can see that it is starting to come loose and I'm just matching this up and you guys can see on this one, I am starting a little higher because it has a cute little image at the bottom that I definitely want to be able to see. So I don't want that part covered up with the patina. And right now I'm just kind of matching up my seams. Sometimes um, when you're applying the second slide, it'll get kind of jumbled where they meet and maybe one is on top of the other one and then the other half is underneath it. So I'm just kind of matching it up, making sure all that water squeezed out. And I get asked this question all the time, like how long do you wait before you epoxy? I will typically wait 30 minutes to an hour. I know some people like to wait longer, but as long as the slide is dry and there's no water underneath it then you can apply it and or apply epoxy and you can kind of feel um, the slide kind of change textures once it's dry when it's still wet it feels kind of stretchy maybe you'll be able to like move the slide or stretch the slide but when it's dry it feels a little more brittle And I am also going to do the patina technique kind of where the slides meet. So I wasn't super anal about getting them to match up perfectly with each other. I just wanted them, you know, relatively matched up. But the patina is going to cover a lot of this stuff, which was my original plan. So I wasn't too concerned about getting everything all matchy matchy. So once this dries, I'm going to apply a layer of epoxy and then we'll be ready to apply the patina. So this is my tumbler after I have applied epoxy. I wanted to apply a layer of epoxy so in case this looked awful, I could just remove it and start over. But um, I really ended up liking how it looked. These are the colors that I am using. This is a mint green. This is basically the kit that I was using. It's just a patina kit. These are textured little paint containers, I guess. Um, Michaels used to carry them. I don't think they do anymore. This one is cool gray. This one is brown rust. And then the last one is brass, which is really kind of a copper look. Um, the brass is the only one that was not like a gritty texture. It's more of a smooth texture. Um, I did purchase these off of Amazon. And I'm going to use a smooth paintbrush to apply the brass. And this is going to basically be my base, my base layer. 
So I'm just getting a little bit on my brush and you guys will be able to see how smooth this is. It's really like a super, super pigmented, thick paint. I know that it's probably going to be asked if you can use acrylic paint and you probably would be able to, but it may not give the same effect. And you know what's funny? I'm watching this video now and I don't think that I actually epoxied this cup before I applied that because I can see the lines of my water slide and if I had epoxied, then I would not be able to see those lines. So I guess I just took a chance on this and um, decided if it looked like crap, then I would just toss it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm living on the wild side, guys. So for the brass, I'm basically just going around the top edge of the tumbler. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. I'm going to completely cover the bottom of the tumbler with this paste. Um, and you guys can kind of see in this video, it's a little bit different than acrylic paint where it dries pretty quickly. It's almost like sticky kind of. I'm not really sure how to describe it if you guys haven't used these before. Um, acrylic paint also would not be as opaque. So you may have to do two layers of your base color before you can move on to the second step. And I am trying to get things pretty smooth. I don't want globs of the copper color on the cup. I just wanna smooth it all out. So now I'm going to take my stencil brush. They're really just a coarse little round brush. I have a couple different sizes. And I'm just going to kind of dab around the edges and then down in between where the sheets of music meet, where the water slide meets really. This is just so my edges aren't so perfect. I definitely want the feeling of a rusted patina effect. And these brushes really do help kind of create that effect. Um, I just, I think that I actually ordered these off of Amazon, but I have several different sizes of them. I always think it's good to have different sizes of brushes. That way you can do more detailed work if you need to. And then you have the larger ones if you need to cover a larger area. So I'm just going around the entire cup and just adding some little dollops of this copper color, roughing up those edges a bit. And when we do apply epoxy to this tumbler, the epoxy, as you guys know, will smooth out a lot of the roughness on the cup. So if you want your cup to appear to have some texture, you really need to get the different textures kind of built up on the tumbler. So it will have a little bit more of a 3D effect. And we do that by building up the colors, which you guys will see in this video. So I'm pretty happy with this base layer. I'm just adding a few more little copper spots. So now it basically just looks kind of like copper all over the tumbler. And now we're going to start adding different colors to kind of layer them and create that patina effect. 
So now that the copper has dried, we're going to go and add our different colors. I'm gonna go ahead and just open all of them. So that way I can just easily dip my paintbrush in there. And these textured paints don't really take long to dry at all. And I did mix these up really, really well. Um, the textured paints have a tendency to kind of dry out on the top and all of the liquid kind of sinks to the bottom. So you definitely want to stir them up really good at first. And you kind of have to load your paintbrush um, with these colors because it is kind of a textured paste. It's not like your typical acrylic paint. It's almost kind of like you're painting with wet sand almost. <laughs> you guys can see the grittiness on the screen right now. And so I'm basically just taking this lighter color and we're just dabbing it all along that copper, but not bringing it to the edge of the copper, if that makes sense. I still wanna see that copper, so we're going to leave a little bit of that copper color around the edges. And I am just playing this in real time for you guys, just so you can see how long it takes um, and really how long you should kind of dab the paint for <laughs> and how long it takes to dry really, which is not long. So again, I'm just taking this mint color and we are just putting it all over the copper or the brass as they call it. And y'all can see that I really kind of glob that paint on there. And I did several cups um, with with this patina effect, but um, you do kind of have to wash your brush in between applications because it does dry really quickly on this brush. So between colors, I did wash it really good <laughs> and kind of wet in those bristles back up and get that hardened texture out of my paintbrush. So we're doing the same thing to the bottom right now. We're just dabbing on this mint color. And I didn't want to cover the edges completely because again, I really want that more realistic kind of patina rusted feel. So you guys can see <laughs> about this time is when it was getting kind of difficult to apply that mint color because my brush was getting so hard or just built up with the texture, I should say.
So even right now with the mint and copper color, you can see that rusted patina effect start to come to life. And I was really, really liking how this tumbler was coming together. So since I was just going to do a little bit of this blue, I just kind of started to dab it around a little bit. It was a little bit more thinner than the mint color. So I just kind of started dabbing it around and then I went and washed my brush, I think. <laughs> it's hard to remember what I do in videos a month later. And with this um, darker blue, I wasn't as generous with it. I just wanted a few areas to have this blue color. I didn't want it as widespread as the mint. But already it was coming together so nicely. Looks so good guys. So now I'm gonna let this dry and wash out my brush and then we'll do the other colors. All right, so now that the blues are dried, we're going to go back in with the copper and then we're going to add a little bit of this dark rusted brown. And this is just going to help with the layering aspect of it. And when I apply this copper, I'm not going to cover up all of this green and blue. We're just kind of dabbing it around and we're still going to let these mints and blues kind of shine through. So I'm just literally dabbing about 25% of my brush into this mixture. We're just getting a little bit on this brush because I don't want to cover up too much of it. You can always add more if you want to. And we're doing the same thing for the bottom. And if y'all do decide to do this, just remember it's just paint. So if you want a little more of that mint green or a little more of that blue, you can always go in and add more. Um, so I'm pretty happy with how this looks. So I'm going to take a smaller brush and we're going to dab just a little bit of this dark brown color on here. And I will say that my copper was already dry, so I am good to go. I think that is the key with doing this um, because if you try to add this when the colors are still wet, they can get kind of muddled together and not create that kind of textured layer effect that we're going for. So I am just adding just a little bit of this darker brown you guys can see.
I really just want this dark brown just to kind of be an accent color. And I love how this was coming together. It just reminds me of something that you would pull out of your grandmother's chest that you find in her attic or something. <laughs> just like an old, old piece. And again, we're doing the same thing to the bottom of the cup. And once you're happy with how your patina is looking, we are going to set it to the side, let it dry completely, and then we are going to add two layers of epoxy. I did not seal my patina effect. Um, everything was dried on there pretty good, so I didn't really see a need to seal it. Um, and since we are going to be applying flowers, I do want this to be as smooth as possible. If you're not going to apply flowers, then you can just epoxy one or two times, sand it really good, and then add your final layer of epoxy. But we are going to add epoxy, sand it, and then add our flowers. So this is what the tumbler looks like after we have applied two layers of epoxy. I am still really happy with how it looks. It has been sanded, so some parts aren't as bright as they would be if I had not sanded. But you guys can see that even with as much texture that was on that cut beforehand, that epoxy really did smooth everything out a lot. But there is still a lot of depth and dimension um, before I sanded it. <laughs> and you could see everything clearly. So now we're going to apply some little poinsettias that I printed out. I just printed these out um, from Cricut Printable Vinyl. These poinsettias are linked in a different video that I had, so you guys may already have them. But if not, I will link them in the description below. And I just kind of put some together and printed them out. And we're go just going to peel the backing off and stick them to the cup. With printable vinyl, there is no need to seal anything. You just print, put on your cup, and go. But since we are going to be detailing these with glitter, I will seal it with Rust-Oleum two times. The same thing that I sealed my water slide with. So I really love the addition of the poinsettias. They're not taking away anything on the cup, but they're just kind of adding a little floral aspect, make them a little bit more Christmassy. And I did opt to use white flowers instead of the red poinsettias because I felt like they stood out a little bit more. I thought that the red kind of blended in a little bit too much with the copper and browns on the cup already.
I think it's the hardest thing trying to decide where to place things on a cup. Anyone else? <laughs> And I did want my top poinsettia to look like it was kind of just falling over the edge of the cup, which is why I applied it halfway on there. So I'm just going to take my blade and kind of cut the top little leaves off. So I just peeled those off. And kind of the same thing with water slide, you want to make sure everything is smoothed down well. And now we are going to detail this with some glitter. So I opted to use green and gold glitter, and this is my little Mod Podge precision bottle. Um, I got these little bottles off Amazon, I believe. They just have a precision tip, so they're really good at doing detailed work with the Mod Podge. They do clog up very easily though, so you have to make sure that you clean the tip and put the little plastic cover back on it. So I am just really doing a very thin line of this Mod Podge along the leaves and along the flowers and then we're just going to sprinkle the glitter on there. There are already lines, very, very faint, thin lines already on the images. You can't really tell that much in the video, but I'm just following the lines that are already there. And then we're just going to sprinkle the glitter on and tap it all off. So that gold glitter just really kind of sets those details apart. So I am basically just going to do this for the remaining flower petals and for the leaves. And I have a clog. So I did speed this up a little bit. Um, it's pretty repetitive, just following the lines that are already on the petals and the leaves and then sprinkle your glitter. And I do recommend using a fine glitter for this because you don't want your, or an extra fine I should say, because you don't want your lines to be too thick and look kind of awkward on the leaves. And you do want to work quick so your Mod Podge doesn't dry. Since we're doing really thin layers or thin lines of Mod Podge, it can have a tendency to dry kind of quickly. 
So you don't want to have to go back and touch up lines and cause the little details to kind of build up. I think I could do about a half of a large poinsettia without the Mod Podge drying too much. So this was probably the most tedious part, um, just kind of trying to follow the lines on these flowers and petals, making sure the Mod Podge didn't dry, making sure you didn't get a big glob of Mod Podge on your flowers. but they do turn out really pretty. So we are just doing the same thing. We're just um, outlining the details of the petals and sprinkling the glitter on. I do recommend using a extra fine or micro fine glitter for detailing work like this because if you use a fine or thicker glitter, then the details will appear a little chunky and not as delicate. If you work quickly, like I was doing here, obviously this is sped up, but I do try to work fairly quickly. I was able to Mod Podge this entire poinsettia and sprinkle glitter on without the Mod Podge drying too much. And once we are done with this gold, I'm going to dump all of the excess back into the container and get our green glitter out. Um, this gold is engagement from Puzzle Tumblers and the green is Frankenstein Martini from the Drunk Flamingo. And now that I'm working on a green background, you guys can see the Mod Podge lines better. So you can see how thin they are. And if you don't have a precision tip bottle, you can definitely purchase one off um, Amazon, but you should be able to go in with a fine tipped paintbrush or something like a toothpick or something like that and get similar results. And I did have a clog in my bottle, but these CC DIY tweezers do work really well at getting little clogs out. And once I get done Mod Podging all of my little glitter lines, I will let it dry typically overnight just in case there were thicker Mod Podge areas. And then I will brush off all of the excess with a bristle brush and then seal it one really good time with Bristoleum two times, which is the same thing that I use to seal my water slide. And then I will epoxy it two more times just to make sure everything is sealed and smoothed. Obviously, if you need to sand it and re-epoxy, you can do that. 
Um, I don't ever put a limit on how many coats of epoxy I apply. I just epoxy and sand until it's completely smooth. But that is pretty much it, guys. I think it turned out really pretty. And here are some finished pictures of them. I definitely think I achieved the rusted patina effect that I was looking for. And if you guys decide to try this technique out, please post in the group because I love to see what you guys create from tutorials that you watch. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook or my Patreon group. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.